And you're pretty much just part of the back end side of things, making sure. Uh, my official role is head of technology and security, and I lead the workplace team, uh, a cloud team, and security team. Do they get attacked a lot? Like, has. has... No, 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 knock on wood, no. <laughs> is, so, no, no, so no I've been, no, so when I was at GE, when, yeah. we, when we say attack, so you're talking about security aspect of things. We're talking about, yeah, like, so in terms of cybersecurity, yeah. like, how do you, how does it, how do you secure? How do we secure? How do you secure? <laughs> Um, look, it, it's a great question, uh, and the, the 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 politically correct response is there's no silver bullet, but there, yeah. there are things there are things you can do mm. just 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 to make sure that fundamentally, like you got the fundamentals in place, and I talk about the fundamentals a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. and the fundamentals things like you know good password hygiene, yeah, right? yeah two points, yeah, two part authentication, yeah, 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 they call it multi factor authentication, and and a lot of this stuff can translate into your personal. Like life, right? yeah, hundred percent, yeah, 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 yeah. So when you say there's a big push right now, yeah, so, yeah, there is from the government, right? So the government, mm-hmm. yeah. So and so where I always so I educate staff, I educate family because they always call me, mm-hmm. and I educate you know friends, like yeah, friends. So, and yeah. so when when we talk about password hygiene, so the simple things there is you know either use a long or complex password, and what they sort of say is you know go with a phrase. So take a take a phrase from your favorite book, your favorite movie, yeah, yeah, and use that, right? But yeah. Try not to use it for every account that you have. Mm. So if you use it for like email, maybe yep. don't use it for your banking password. Right? Try to keep yeah, okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Or get a password manager. Mm. Right. Mm. And I've got a, I've got one that I use, but there are, there are really good ones out there. And you know Google and Edge, they're all getting their own inbuilt password managers, which are becoming good and strong. But just just be mindful. You know, I have seen those, but I don't, I've never really understood them because I look at the the combinations that they come up with, and I'm like, oh, I won't remember that. Oh, don't have to. Holy, it, like that's what I mean. I, I don't understand how you can really. How does it? So does, does it always stay the same? Like, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. is it something so, that you have to be synchronized over all your devices to be able to then plug in? So, and so yeah. that gives you the security. So, and here's the beauty of where technology sort of ha- has been and is progressing to yeah. is a single account, multiple applications, right? So if you use Edge, or if you use Chrome, so I was in Edge after I came after yesterday, actually. <laughs> So if you yeah, use Chrome, if you use Chrome, yeah, 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 yeah. Because right? Edge, I use Edge a lot because we're micro, we do Microsoft. We use a lot of Microsoft technology, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But so if you use, let's, I'll take Edge, but it's it's the same as Chrome. If you use Edge and you use the password manager in Edge, yeah, right, and you log on to all your websites, right, yep. it basically stores the password encrypted in in its password vault. Yep, yep. So when you log on to that same site, yeah, and it knows who you are, yeah, it logs on for you. Yeah, cool. So right. it kind of saves that need to remember it. Yeah. Right. And then if and then most applications has a password reset facility if you forget it or if something happens to you. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I never thought that. So you can you can do that. But if you use a password manager, mm. those things like I mean like LastPass or what, Bitwarden, like these are these are common. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They also store it. They store it in the cloud. So that's kind of like what you got to be trust trustworthy around. Yeah. 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 And then 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 if your phone like your phone dies or anything like that, normally you can restore it. From- yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But the the thing that I use the most is uh, Apple Face ID, right? And Apple Face ID is integrated to most things that you log on to, mm-hmm. and like PayPal, uh, pay, pay, PayPal, all those kind of things. Like use, yeah. And they call that password list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know where they're going to. So the native technology, like when I talk about iPhone or Android, is getting very good mm-hmm. at helping you stay secure and stay off, you know, authenticated, mm-hmm. right? And and not having to manage or remember multiple passwords, which is kind of the trick, right? Like that. Yeah. No, you're right. I guess it's, yeah, it's pretty much just a way of streamlining the whole process, yeah. and maybe that's what a lot of people might have fear with because they're thinking that oh, if I'm using, I'm trusting in technology and AI to kind of facilitate my security. Yeah, yeah, AI, yeah, yeah. another different, yeah, yeah, another another dimension, yeah, another dimension. Yeah. But um, that's probably where the fear is too, because there's just no understanding of it. Yeah, so, I don't care. Yep. Uh, and I, it's a fascinating topic. Like, you, it depends where you want to go. Like, it is, yeah, and so, it's yeah. only going to get faster and, mm-hmm. and much more. Um, much more intuitive, much more intellectual. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it yeah. And then like there, there's there's upsides and downsides to any progress with technology. Yeah. How you use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I guess it's just yeah, because there's such a massive push for you know, you know, identity theft and stuff like that. You know. Yeah. People, you know, suffering unfortunately because they're just not yeah. well educated or well informed and Un- unfortunately, again, in in that space like there are certain things as it as a, as a country we could do to to sort of you know simplify that problem 
Mm. Like, but and 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 data and identity is probably one of those. Yeah, and it's as simple as like you know, if when you go when you get a credit card or you get a home loan, anything like that, right? You've got to provide hundred point check of ID, right? Like you've got to provide that, right? Yeah. And then legislation and law dictates in certain circumstances that the organisation has to retain that information. Who? Why? You've already got the loan. I know who you are. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. but they're the debates you have to have at yeah. national and the country because they're they're potentially like. Leaving your information open for it to be potentially hacked and, uh, and, st- and stolen. Correct. Uh, well, stolen, so there's, there's there's the yeah. first part of I why do, yeah why do we need to let them hold that information for as long as they do mm-hmm. like and retain it and if they do make sure it's super secure which yeah. they don't always do because they forget about it and they got like tons of it yeah and then the second part is how are they securing that data yeah mm-hmm. which is it's, it's not easy it's yeah. I can tell you another organisation I've worked for and in it's it's not easy. But yeah, like it's and it's different for different orgs and different industries. Yeah, yeah. No, because there's some very opportunistic people out there that want to try and get into that information too. Yeah. Clearly, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And it it only takes one slip up, one click on an email, and like one vulnerability or one exploit. And yeah, mm. but it it is it is extremely sad when I read stories about you know retirees and. Well, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, they lose everything. Yeah, and so they respond to an email. Correct. Yeah, 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 it's sad. And so the, the, you know, the darker side of AI is because it's progressively pushing technology to the boundaries where we've never been before, and and you can and you can start using it to mimic people's voices, you know, replicate their image, mm-hmm. like to the point where it becomes like for like their yeah, photo. Yep, yep, yep. Or, or, or voice. Oh, you yeah. mentioned like there has been, um, there's been. Uh, samples in industry where that technology has been used oh. how you you know extort and yeah, well, yeah so it already yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to the point where there was one story that i was reading where a team's meeting was happening and somehow like uh, a the cfo injected himself in this team meeting so he was able to join and it wasn't the cfo it was a ai version of the cfo wow. that told the finance person on that call to transfer money immediately because we need to do it Twenty six million dollars. Nothing by half. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, yeah. Look, like these like these are articles yeah. that I've been reading. Yeah. So it's just different elements of like securing the apps you're using and securing. It, it is multi multi dimensional. Yeah. Authentication, logins. Yeah, yeah. Multi dimensional. Yeah, wow. But as yeah. as an individual, as a person, like just it's just the good hygiene stuff that you 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 can do and shouldn't do. Yeah. And then and then learn about the services in case you are impacted. Yeah. Like yeah. ID care and your bank will tell you that you've got these services that you can subscribe to and yeah. yeah. Do you think um like there's there's still that handful of the population that likes to go to banks to line up and do stuff? Do you think oh, that's yeah, gonna remember. be around for a very long time well, still? Because there's still they're like they're kind of pushing that a lot of services go online. So I, but there's still those like our parents, for example. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think like and I can I probably get the bank wrong, but there was a bank just recently. And they said they're closing down all their branches, all of them, all all their branches. Like, oh wow, yeah, yeah. So I can't again. I don't want to. I don't want to quote the bank, but I just yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. but there was a, there was a bank that just recently said I'm going to close down all the branches. And so, what that does is it either pushes well, as the core of their market, doesn't it? Really, in some ways, it pushes you one, it pushes you online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what? It, not only does it push that in the individual line, you'll then probably push the the workings of that to people and their family that know how to use it. Right, like. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I know my mum helps administer my grandparents' accounts because it's all online. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So demographically, yeah, I think there's still a lot of people that like the bricks and mortars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably, and they probably just feel safer for the fact that they're dealing with a human being as opposed to technology. Yeah, it's interesting that how bricks and mortars because, like again, I get told like, so you know, cybercrime as opposed to physical crime. Back in the day when the banks and the bricks and mortars when they're holding cash. Mm-hmm. You know, tellers would have guns. Yeah, like, yeah. Thought, you know, I would, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's how they used to get the cash. But now, because yeah. of technology, you don't have to be in those bricks that the you know, the branches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can do it online. Yeah, and most people, are, and you can do it on scale. Yeah, yeah. Like you can email, like you, you send a million emails, right? Mm-hmm. And you only need like hundred thousand of those to click, and you'll be successful. Yeah, yeah. So like that's that's, that's they it. work on numbers. They just go on their scam list, whatever yeah. they get given. Yeah, because yeah. that's one thing they do, isn't it? Like with the scammers online, they'll they'll spend. Two or three hundred dollars to get a list of stolen names and identity, like yeah. people so, are, I, 
information at all. Well, I'm just going by what I've said. No, no, no. You, so you're on. So what, but it's just so like, yeah, they get that info, they get a couple of clicks, yeah. and suddenly, like, yeah. yeah. So in industry term, mm -hmm. is in in the cyber th space, they, there's a there's a there's a mob called like initial access brokers. Mm -hmm. Right. And what initial access brokers do, and all they do, is compromise accounts. And yeah. They, anywhere. Anywhere yeah, they yeah, yeah. and they'll put them on the dark web to sell. Yeah. And then other groups will buy those accounts. Yeah. Then depending on if it's an email, if it's a password, if it's a cookie session cookie, like cookie session, mm -hmm. if, depending on the, the, the attributes it has and the successful access it has, the price of it goes up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're like if you've got an email, maybe like a dollar. If you've mm -hmm. got an email or password, maybe twenty bucks. If you've got an email password, active session cookie, maybe fifty bucks. Yeah. Well, so imagine that. Like like that's the business model these yeah, yeah, the cyber content. And then they just cipher through that information yeah. to find what's yeah. valuable for yeah. them to work on and then yeah. they get contacted by yeah. Yeah, so and so. Yeah. Ah, right, man. So yeah. is it business in itself? Watch 60 Minutes now and then. <laughs> Cause oh, I've, I've watched a few, but even online, there, uh, there's a grass, there's, I can't remember his name or anything, but I was even just watching some of his stuff yesterday, but he, he hacks a dude's, you know, hacks a, a hacker's PC. Yep. And deletes all his information, all his photos and passwords yep. and all, the, yep. all of his... Yep. Previous clients stolen information, just deletes 200 gig worth of info to get him offline. Yeah. And it's just like, that is fantastic. Yeah. That's amazing. That just needs to happen more. Yep. Yeah. You know, so if you want an Australian podcast that I religiously follow, it's called Risky Business, Patrick Gray. Mm -hmm. um, and just once a week, he releases like the whole news that happens in the week. Yep. And it's like maybe an hour long, less. Yeah. Yep. It's just, it's a good past, just good podcast. It, it's probably a little in depth and a little note on the side of technical, but they give you the broad brush of everything. Yeah, no, good, good. Uh, that'd be cool. I'll just check it out. So.